Lewis Hamilton was all set to win a nicely controlled Australian Grand Prix. Though the pace of Lewis in the Mercedes was not quite as crushing as his final frightening lap in qualifying had made everyone suspect, the Melbourne circuit with this current set of regulations made for a trickier terrain for overtaking than a B road in North Wales. So with Hamilton, Raikkonen and Vettel all queued up in a stalemate in stint one, Ferrari pitted Raikkonen ahead of Lewis in an attempt to break the tie. They were going for the undercut, and I've got a video on that. Of course that wasn't going to work as Lewis had a nice cushion over Kimi. He pitted on the next lap and came out ahead of him. But crucially at this point they were both behind Vettel, who did not come in. In fact he stayed out for quite a few laps, and then the virtual safety car came out. Vettel pitted while everyone was under VSC speed limited conditions and came out in the lead. So let's have a little look at how that worked. The numbers I'm using here are going to be very rough, for example only, just to give you the idea of what happened. So under normal racing conditions, no safety car or anything, taking a pit stop costs you about 18 seconds compared to people who stayed out on track. Under the virtual safety car, the pit stop only costs you about 12 seconds as the normal lap times are so much slower and you don't need to pace yourself on pit entry and exit. So Hamilton is about five seconds ahead of Vettel, let's say. Then he pits, loses 18 seconds to him, which brings him out about 13 seconds behind Vettel. But Vettel pits under the virtual safety car, losing only 12 seconds to Hamilton. As Hamilton is about 13 seconds behind at this point, this would bring Vettel out about one second in front. Now, as I said, I made up all these times, 18 seconds, 12 seconds, etc. Just to give you an example, but Mercedes should have known the exact numbers for all these scenarios and calibrated their computer models correctly. But somewhere along the line, they got it all wrong. See, once Lewis Hamilton pitted and it became clear Vettel was not going to pit in lockstep, instead choosing to, in effect, desynchronize his strategy from Hamilton, Mercedes will have been telling Hamilton to get within a certain range of Vettel just in case there's a safety car or something. The time lost during a pit stop is called a pit stop delta, by the way. That's because the Greek letter delta is used to indicate change, so if you take a normal pit stop, your lap time will change by 18 seconds. Anyway, so Mercedes thought the safety car pit stop delta was about 15 seconds, so they made sure Hamilton kept up the pace to get close enough to Vettel within 15 seconds, so that even if a safety car occurred, Vettel would not be able to get ahead of Hamilton. But they were wrong, it was about 12 seconds. Once the VSC was called, there was nothing they could do as Hamilton's pace was locked in under virtual safety car conditions. Um, as an aside, I'm actually using the word safety car and virtual safety car interchangeably here, as the pace you have to adhere to under the virtual safety car is the same as the pace you have to adhere to when catching the safety car. So for any quick dives into the pits, the pit stop delta is essentially the same. So the question is this then, did Ferrari throw Kimi under the bus? Knowing they were all locked together in a queue with little hope of overtaking, did they pit Kimi early, knowing Hamilton would have to cover him off by pitting the very next lap? Thus they gave Vettel the better overall strategy and a chance to overtake, particularly if a safety car came out. I reckon Kimi was trying to work out how to win the race, he certainly wasn't falling back from Lewis. To end up third behind his winning teammate must be gutting. To be honest, Vettel couldn't have beaten either Kimi or Lewis without a safety car type event, so Ferrari were likely just giving Vettel the opportunity to benefit from any spanners thrown in the works. And they got lucky. But let's talk about Bottas. Bottas may well have lost this race for Mercedes, and here's why. If he hadn't have crashed in qualifying and put himself out of contention, he probably would have been hanging around with the Ferraris, probably about fourth in the race. If Bottas had been fourth, Mercedes could have pitted him early to force Vettel into pitting too, because at that point a safety car would be less likely than Bottas getting the undercut and passing Vettel in the pits. Ferrari would have had to cover Bottas off and none of this would have happened. Lewis Hamilton didn't have a wingman on race day and it cost him. I mean Mercedes getting their numbers wrong cost him too. A, a bad day for Team Mercedes I'd say. Probably not as bad as some teams though. 